Hey everybody! In this month's Hero Arts kit video, I am going to do a vintage style collage background, but I'm going to use it on a card instead of in my art journal. But my art journal spread is actually what inspired it. So all of these cute bee themed stamps are out this month, and I just love them. This is the main kit, so you can see it has the big bumbly bees, it has some beautiful flowers to color with. And I'm just going to assemble a couple of different things based on this art journal spread that I did. And I'll link you to the video for that page as well. Now I'm using the cover plate to create this little honeycomb postage stamp. This both cuts and embosses. So when you cut it out with a postage stamp, if you need to tape it together on the back, feel free. Then I use the honeycomb die in the kit to cut myself a stencil. And I just have a piece of ephemera that I am going to adhere down to a card front with some matte medium. Now I'm using a little silicone applicator, which I love. This is better than a paintbrush because it never has any dust on it. And that can be a problem when you're trying to coat things with paint or gel medium in your craft room. So I really like how clean this is. It's a great substitute if you were using foam brushes. This is so much cleaner and better. So I'm putting matte gel medium on both the piece of ephemera and the card front. This really ensures that you get good adhesive all over both sides of the media. And then I'm using just a little hard plastic scraper to scrape that down and make sure that I'm not getting any bubbles, that I'm not missing any little areas that need to be adhered down. Now, I just clean the scraper onto a wet paper towel and then it's ready to go. You don't ever have to really wash it because it's silicone, so nothing really sticks to it. I'm taking some dandelion ink and I'm going to put some light yellow ink on this little postage stamp shaped honeycomb that I cut with this awesome die. This is a fancy die that is, this is not part of the kit, this is an add on this month but it goes so well with all these little bee stamps that we have. So I'll just apply ink all over that. I'm actually going to be layering some ink onto this little piece. So I'll add a little bit of caramel and then I'm going to come back later and use the stencil that I created to add additional little honeycomb shapes to this postage stamp. It's just a really fun way to layer up images and get that sort of vintage collage look that I love. So now this is dry, so I'm going to put a little bit of matte medium down so that I can put this drywall tape that I've cut into a circle with my circle infinity dies. And this is self-adhesive drywall tape. But when you're doing collage, you really also need to use your collage medium in addition to whatever adhesive is on what you're applying. That will ensure that it will never go anywhere. Sometimes the adhesive on some types of stickers and tapes is not as good as matte medium would be. So now I'm putting a little bit of ink onto my bees. I don't want anything bright white on this because I want that vintage warm feel. So everything will get a little bit of paint or a little bit of ink to sort of tone it down and make it look a little bit more antique. Now I have this stencil that I created out of Duralar with that fun die that's in the kit and I'm going to use some translucent embossing paste. Once again I'm just using my little applicator here just to put this embossing paste onto this collage that I'm building up for the background. I will go back later and highlight this so it actually doesn't matter if it's opaque embossing paste, if it's translucent like I'm using here. It doesn't matter because you'll see what I'm going to do with it in the end. It's just for texture at this point, not color, nothing like that. Now I have a little firmer spreader that I'm using that works a little bit better with getting the embossing paste through that stencil. It's not quite as soft, so it works great for that. Then I will color my little bees, just the part that would be yellow on these. They're so chonky and cute. I just love them so much. 
And so they're going to have an overall muted color, but I still want them to have the classic B coloring with the yellow and the black. So I'm just using a graphite marker and then a sparkle pen to add a little bit of sparkle to each one of their wings. There's actually going to be quite a bit of sparkling happening, as you'll see at the end, all over this collage design. So I wanted my little bees to sparkle too. They're so cute. I could stick little bees on everything. I just think these are adorable and they're so bumbly and chubby and cute. So sweet, just like real bees. So now we want to let that dry. And once it's dry, I'm going to come back in with more caramel ink and I'm going to warm up this background. I'll be doing a combination of warm and cool colors here. You know, I like complementary color schemes. So I'm starting with tying the postage stamp element together with my collage background using the same color of ink and just sort of warming up that vintage image. Now, as you'll see here, you still can't see the little honeycomb embossing paste that I had added. So that will come later when I add a little bit of paint, but I am going to darken the area that it's sitting on top of just so that when I do apply the paint, it will pop out more. So I'm adding a little bit of a darker brown warm ink to the background. And this also has the effect of sort of aging the entire piece and contributing to the vintage look. So I've mixed a little bit uh, of some ochre and white paints, and I'm just going to apply those with my finger to the textured areas of this design. So in this case, where I put the embossing paste, if I just lightly go on top of that with my finger and the light paint, it pops that hexagon shape out of the background and lets you see what I was going for when I added those. I'll do the same thing to the little drywall tape. I thought this had sort of a complementary texture to it. It's different from the normal drywall tape that I use and I really like the pattern. So I will add some of this paint mixture around the edges. This is also what I did in the art journal spread that inspired this card. I think that when you do an edge treatment, when you're art journaling, it just pulls your whole layout together and sort of focuses your eye on whatever your focal point is in the center or in this case, slightly off center portion of my card. And it would work the same way on a journal page. You want people's eye to be drawn to whatever you decide your focal point is. So this does both a little bit of fading out of the background design to help you focus, but it also makes it very cohesive. So now I will take that same stencil, just make sure you clean it after you apply the embossing paste through it. And I will apply some caramel ink to add an inked hexagon design on top of the textured hexagon design from the die. And again, this is just tying it all together. So I'll add a few of those and there will be a piece of vellum on top of that. So don't worry about that being too bold in the background, it won't be. And then I will coordinate that with the background by adding more inked hexagons just here and there around the design. On top of the paint is a great way to use like the contrast of that lighter and darker color. I'm just going on top of those lighter paint pieces at the edge. Now to really make it pop, you always wanna have a complementary color. So I'm using just a little bit of turquoise paint and another silicone applicator here to add just little dots of blue around the design. I can't have everything be all one color, so I always think that this is the finishing touch that matters the most, is adding a complementary color, even to a very harmonious design like this one is in terms of color. I'll also add a little bit of this paint with a stencil brush to again highlight some of the different textures that I have down on this page. I love this turquoise paint, it's my favorite. It's the color of all the doors in Santa Fe. So you can really see the texture when you look at the card up close like that. I know it's a little bit hard to see in the video, but it is so great to have that texture. You just wanna to touch it on the card and that's kind of what you want your, your recipient to do. 
So now I'm taking a flat stencil brush and I'm brushing some of this turquoise paint onto the textured areas of the card, like on the honeycombs, again, highlighting that texture even more. And then on the little pieces of drywall tape. This is going to help focus us on the B that will be in the center of the card as well, because those hexagon, that hexagon stencil that I created creates a little opening in the center, which is great. You'll see that on another one of my cards later this month, how you can use that to focus your designs. So I'll add a few more little dots of paint, and then I'm going to take some punchinella and add some paint through the punchinella. It's easier with the stencil brush than with my little applicator. So I'll just go around and frame those in. This is such a useful thing. It's actually the waste product for making sequins, but it just makes such a great stencil. And it's nice to know that that plastic can be used for something else and not just thrown away. So this is about where I'm going to put my little postage stamp, but first I want to add a little bit of vellum. Again, just pulling the bee out a little bit from the background so that he's the most prominent thing on the card. So first I'll glue it down. This is actually Duralar. I'll glue it down and then that will let me hide the glue. I can just put it where the body of the bee is and then you won't see it through the vellum. So I'll put him on there. You'll need to let that dry a little longer than normal. So while I'm letting that dry, I'm going to add iridescent medium all over the entire background. So this is translucent, but it is iridescent and shimmery. And so it just pulls the whole thing together and makes it sparkly and fun. This is one of my favorite finishing touches in my art journal is just to cover an entire page with this iridescent medium. It just makes everything look prettier, I think. So you can see the shimmer and shine there, and it's really spectacular in real life and all that beautiful texture. And then the little bee will just sit on top of that and you can see how the whole thing gets pulled together in the end. So head over to my blog today for more information and a giveaway of some of this month's products. And thanks so much for watching.